Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, maybe I should be welcoming myself back because I've been on hiatus, right? <laughs> I just want to check in. I've been getting a handful of, of messages both on the email address that I posted and those of you that have me like on Facebook or, or other uh, social media, you guys have been reaching out, making sure everything's okay. Everything's fine. Um, you know, since I've been home, I, I looked in QuickBooks and not including deadhead miles, guys, I... In the last 10 months, um, I build 136,000 miles in less than 10 months. Um, I've been working my butt off. So I've been away from home a lot. Um, I, I barely was home over the holidays just for a couple days. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of catch up with the family. I've been doing some honeydews around the house. i um, been working with my daughter to clean up this, this F-150 she's going to be driving. Um, I may need to send the interior out to get done. I, I used a couple products that have worked well for me in the past. Um, the stains look like they go away, but then you can see them again. Um, I think this had Scotch Guard on it before, and maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Anyway, um, so a handful of things. Guys, do me a favor. If you're in a group, in a forum, whatever, and you see people getting ready to go out and invest in a box truck, do me a favor and send them over to this channel where they can ask me to, to check markets. Um, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do like a, a full load board review. I'll, I'll try and get that out here, you know, something like that out during the week. Um, I should get back to work here next week. Uh, for now, I'm playing catch up with the family. I'm outside in the truck right now because my house just has really bad echo in every room. Um, you know, most of the family's still asleep. We kind of had a late light last night. And so I'm out in the truck. The, the acoustics are better in here and I'm not bothering any of them. It's still kind of early in the morning. But do me a favor. If you're on a group where people are looking to, to purchase equipment and get into the box truck market, especially... I know some of you feel like I'm focusing too much on the box truck. You know, the thing of it is there's there's videos out there that make it look like it's it's the greatest thing since sliced bread and it's get rich quick and everything else. The truth about the box truck market, guys, for Amazon, that market only exists in areas where Amazon does not deliver on their own. So like like my house, I, I see the van pretty much every day, you know, the gray van with, with the Amazon logo, that's how they deliver here. So box trucks don't come to my town. My post office does not receive an Amazon box truck. Um, I believe the closest fulfillment center where these vans come from is in Valencia. Excuse my drink there, but, um, yeah. So if I were to buy a box truck, I would have to go to the LA market and the LA market is very hit and miss and it's very saturated. Um, I'll show it here in a minute, but there's loads that are for next week and by Monday they'll all be gone. And that's, that's a problem with the saturated market guys. They, they take the loads before they go up. Anything you book with Amazon that's more than six hours in advance you're giving like 30 to 50% discount. That's, you've, if you've seen my videos, you know the more, the more, uh, the closer the time is for departure, the better the rate gets, right? And so the LA market isn't good for box truck. It, it isn't. But there's a lot of people that are buying these trucks and without access to the load board, which you can't get access to the load board until you have an active authority and you have all the insurances in place, which means you spent money already. And it's very tough for someone that's gonna start up a new business to go out and buy themselves a truck. Um, there's a Facebook, a Facebook post where, you know, what, what seems to be a very nice, you know, informed, um, intelligent person is gonna go out and buy a brand new truck for about 90K and I don't think their market's good. Um, and that's that's problematic. Um, you're gonna go out and buy this truck 
now you're gonna have payments on top of your insurance and everything else, and you have an anticipation of what you would like to, to clear net after all your expenses, um, but if you're not even able to make that expectation in gross, you have a serious problem. And so markets like Los Angeles, Houston, um, Vegas, Phoenix, Dallas, they're all horrible markets for box trucks, okay? Um, Los Angeles has box truck activity, but it's not a good market for it. It's so saturated with trucks. Right now there's, there's loads there, but they're for next week, and people are gonna book them today and tomorrow at you know a dollar and change a mile instead of letting that rate go up. So if you have a box truck, if you're like me and you live 60 miles north of LA, and you know, you're gonna get a dollar ninety a mile, you would have to deadhead into LA 60 miles, go do your two or three hundred mile trip, and then deadhead back. It, it doesn't make any sense. Anyways, so if you guys are on different forums, groups, whatever, and you see people looking to invest, do them and yourself a favor. Refer them over to, to my channel here. And it's not that I'm trying to promote the channel per se. Um, you know, as you guys see, I'm, I'm doing all this to help others get started and, and make the right decisions. Um, in the last week, I've seen like four people that have purchased equipment or are, are about to purchase equipment and they're in a horrible market or a market that has no market. Um, there's, there, I'll show it here in a minute, but there's, there's a guy that has a truck already. He's in Las Vegas and it looks like a very cool truck. Um, it's got a sleeper, 26 foot box. It looks modern, well kept, good paint. You know, hopefully he didn't overpay for it, but he's in Vegas. There's no market in Vegas. So he's gonna have to try and find something really cheap to get down to LA and hope he gets a load coming back to Vegas. Um, he's got a sleeper, so I don't know. Maybe his intention is to run over the road, long haul. I don't know. Anyway, and so I'll probably be home another few days. Um, there's an issue with, with my IFTA account. There's there's another company with a very similar name to my company. Um, my company's name ends with the word corp, which is short for corporation, um, the other company name ends with Inc, which is short for Incorporated, and didn't get my IFTA stickers, so I contacted the IFTA office, and they're like, oh, well, we're not sending them to you because you haven't filed. And so I sent her, you know, all my filings and my canceled checks and said, tell me where I haven't filed or I haven't paid, and she's like, no, that's somebody else's account, and I'm like, no, ma'am, this is the account you guys gave me. You know, here's here's my paperwork. Here's here's where here's my application. You got to keep all that stuff, guys. When you go to apply for your authority and, and everything else, you have to keep copies of everything. Turns out they misassigned the account number they gave me, and apparently my stickers actually belong to someone else, and all my returns are being credited to someone else. And so she says that this will be resolved in the next couple business days, and so hopefully I'll have my stickers. I may have to swing by their office and pick them up, but um, that's that's kind of what I've been busy with. That, cleaning up the truck, doing honeydews around the house. Um, we're gonna touch up a little bit of paint in my daughter's room tomorrow. We, we remodeled her room, uh, painted, um, did, did some new furnishings, uh, drapes, stuff like that. My daughter and I did that as a, as a project about a year ago and there's a couple spots where you know she's rubbed some paint off trying to clean stuff uh, her bed sits up against the wall and it, it kind of rubbed the paint thin there and there's a couple spots up high on the vaulted ceilings where we didn't quite get it right so that'll be tomorrow um, I'm also working on a PPP loan for those of you that have been bus in business long enough um, if you qualify to get yourself one of these loans um, it's free money guys um, it's free money as long as you spend 60% of it on payroll. It's forgivable. And so I've been working on that this week also. Um, for us, it's it's a sizable amount because 2019 still had a lot of employees. Our payroll was really high. 
And so I'm going to use that money to put another four or five trucks over the road. That'll, that'll turn me back into a fleet again, at least a fleet that I can say, hey, I have trucks, and uh, maybe even get me out of the truck. Maybe at that point I'll have enough trucks over the road where I don't need to drive and I can focus on growth and development again instead of, you know, being stuck behind the wheel. Anyways, I'm going to kind of go over some of the, I'm going to show some of the bad markets and I'm also going to do a little tutorial on how to work the application, um, how to basically simulate it like I'm going to book a load. I think some people don't know how to do that and I've, I've been reading a lot of comments on Facebook groups where people just got allowed to be on the, the application but they don't know how to book a load or post a truck. And so that's what this video is going to be about. You will see some rates on, on different markets as I'm doing it, but it's not going to be like a specific, um, I'm opening up a specific market. I'll probably do a video like that, um, maybe Sunday night. That'll, that'll be when the market will be full again, and you'll be able to see Monday loads. Um, I'll probably try and put one together. I'll record it Sunday night and probably upload it Monday morning. But anyways... Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the new subscribers. I, I see you guys are still, you know, subscribing, even though I haven't uploaded anything in, in just under a week. Um, welcome to the to the channel. Um, you know, we're here to help. We're here to, to, you know, help you guys make informed decisions. That's what the channel is all about. Sharing, um, sharing information and knowledge is is what this group is all about. Um, it's it's not. Uh, uh, it's not a commercial. Um, we're, we're not like this big marketing firm trying to get you guys to click here, that kind of thing. The, the group is, or the channel is intended to help people make the right decisions, buy the right equipment, and uh, book the right loads. Um, you know, we don't want people making bad decisions jumping into this business because then desperation kicks in. Holy cow, I bought this truck. You know, my payment's 2000 a month. You know, my insurance is... 1600 a month um i need to run every day solid or i can't pay the bills next thing you know these people are taking you know dollar 70 dollar 80 a mile loads and that's bad for all of us guys we we want everyone getting you know three bucks a mile or better that's that's that that's a semi truck rate we want to be at three bucks a mile or better and you know if if people come in misinformed and then they feel like they've painted themselves into a corner, they start taking loads they shouldn't. Um, I haven't gone back to the oil field because there's guys out there working for 55 to 65 an hour. Um, so, some quick math. If I pay a driver 25 bucks an hour, plus I add, you know, the, the liabilities, you know, Social Security, workman's compensation, unemployment benefits, and that person gets into overtime over half the money that you generate at 55 an hour goes to the driver. Then you take money for fuel, insurance, wear and tear on the truck, and you're not making money, you're losing money. At least this is how the oil field works. And so it makes no sense. I mean, even if you use dumb math of 20 bucks an hour at overtime, that's 30 bucks an hour, add payroll burden another 10%, so now you're at 33 um, and you're charging 55. Doesn't make any sense. At 90 bucks an hour, there's money. At 50 to 60, you're not making anything. And that's that's why yours truly is out over the road instead of in the oil field. There's, there's no money in it right now. Um, and likewise, we don't want people to jump into this business thinking, you know, it's it's easy. And then they jump in, they panic because the loads are horrible, but now they got a truck payment and they got all this coming at them. It's better to, to help people see what's there and how to book the better loads. I've had people ask me, why are you showing people how to take the loads you want instead of you taking them for yourself? Um, we're not in competition with each other, guys. There's, there's thousands of trucks and there's thousands of loads. We're not in competition with each other. I don't see any of you as my direct competitors. We're colleagues, you know, we're, we're, we're in the same thing together. We should help each other. If I can help you guys all get three and a quarter to 350 a mile and you guys all, you know, hold tough and wait for that better rate on Amazon, the Amazon rate will go up. 
Amazon rates go down because we take the cheap loads and the people that are taking the cheap loads are typically the people that jumped in head first, weren't ready, didn't realize what they were getting into and now all of a sudden just just to cover their insurance and their truck payment, you know, they got to take whatever they can get. And the next thing you know, they're taking that dollar 80 a mile and they're hurting it for all of us. And so again, this is kind of why I say if, if you see people that are that are looking for answers, don't don't treat my my channel like it's it's your secret. <laughs> you know, share it, let everyone be informed, let everyone make the right decisions. Because the right decision is to make more money. That's that's the right decision. The right decision is to not take loads cheap. The right decision is to get that three plus bucks a mile. And, you know, by association, so will you because the rates will go up. That's that's how the market works. Anyways, um, I'm going to load a little bit information here. Um, primarily, it's going to be kind of a, a show of how bad the, the box truck market is. And I'm going to kind of show how to book loads and or find them. Uh, kind of demonstrate how the app works. Uh, someone told me apparently I haven't really done a good job of that. So I'll see if I can do that quickly, and then hopefully tomorrow night I'll do more of a market analysis. If you guys post which markets you want in the comments, I'll try and get them out um, tomorrow night. As always, thanks for watching, and enjoy your weekend. All right, guys. Thanks for, for sticking around for the next part of the video. Um, so this is the truck the gentleman purchased, and I'm not going to single him out and, and use his name or anything. This is a beautiful truck, guys. I mean, if I was going to do box truck, you know, this is ideal. He's got a sleeper, so if he takes something longer, he's not, you know, he's not stuck trying to straddle two seats on the cab. Um, you know, I've seen box trucks at truck stops where it's a regular cab and, you know, they've covered the windows and you know they're uncomfortable and they're trying to sleep. Um, this truck has a sleeper. It, it's got a lift gate. It's got a 26-foot box on it. I can't tell from the picture if this is a um, a CDL required truck or not. I'm going to say it probably is. Um, you know, I could be wrong, but you know, this this person made you know a decent sized investment, and um, you know, he posted that he just got approved for for Amazon, and how do I go about booking loads and and maybe getting a dedicated route? The problem is the truck is based out of Las Vegas. And I'll show you guys in a minute, there, there's no market in Vegas, much less anything dedicated. Um, you're, you're, you're not gonna find dedicated routes in Vegas. Anyway, and so if this person would have found my channel, um, if this truck requires a CDL, it's very likely this individual would have picked um, a different type of truck. It's very possible this person would have um, gone the route of, you know, maybe doing a semi truck. Anyway, so I'm going to quickly show some of the markets that are really, really bad. Um, I know you guys are constantly asking, um, and and some of you guys that do semi trucks feel like I'm I'm dedicating too much time to the box truck. The reality is, we we need for the box truck guys to come in making the right decisions because box truck rates do affect the big truck rates. Amazon's getting hip to the idea that they don't need to pay a semi truck to load a couple totes and move them from one, one location to another. They can do a box truck and box truck operators are willing to run cheaper. So guys, we, we need to educate our box truck partners into doing the right thing and getting better rates so that Amazon doesn't move more of those super light loads that everyone enjoys. Um, you know, your, your four pallets, but you're still charging for the whole truck, those four pallets will fit in a box truck. And, you know, as box trucks saturate the market, do we really want do we really want the semi truck work to go away in favor of the box truck? And so we, we want to educate these guys into getting the better rates and doing the right thing. Anyway, so this is Houston, Texas, okay? It's a hundred mile radius and you can see there's no matches. Um, 
within 169 miles, these, these ones that say similar matches and they're shaded in blue, the difference is it's outside of the circle. So this is 169 miles deadhead from Houston. So if you're in the Houston market, this is where you're going to have to chase the work. All right. Uh, someone posted in Philadelphia. I'm not going to single them out, but I think they commented um, on on one of my videos. And I think they had just gotten on, on the load board as well that they weren't seeing any loads. Um, there's one load. And this must have just been added because literally 15 minutes ago, um, before I started recording the video, I went through and, and looked at this market and there was nothing there. So this is a 923 mile load. It's going to Chicago and they want teams in a box truck and it pays a buck 34 a mile. Now, this is where we need the box truck guys to, to do better because this is a similar rate to what Amazon is paying teams in a semi truck. And so the load, the load on this is so light that they say, hey, we can just put it in a box truck. Um, my hope here is that someone won't take it immediately and the rate goes up and then Amazon won't think, that a box truck is that much cheaper and then progressively all of our rates go up. Anyway, so if you're in Philadelphia, um, I didn't realize it was 900 miles to Chicago from Philadelphia. Okay, that's because this isn't in Philadelphia technically, it's in Maryland. We can look at it on the map real quick. Oh, see, and it has multiple stops. That, that's why it's so many miles. You're, you're not going, you're not beelining it straight there. So, okay. Um, let's look at the next market. Phoenix. I think someone here had posted that they either bought a truck already or they were about to. Um, there's nothing for a box truck in Phoenix. Okay. I'm going to show Los Angeles. Los Angeles is going to have loads. Um, as you can see, it's 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 next Tuesday at a buck fifty-two a mile. There's a buck forty-nine a mile. It's going to Vegas. So both these loads are going to Vegas. So the guy that just got on the load board in Vegas, unfortunately for him to to work for Amazon, he's going to have to deadhead to LA to pick up these three hundred. $300 loads. Vegas should be $1,100 in a semi truck. I don't care what you do or how you do it. Your fuel mileage on a box truck is not any better than a semi truck. They're usually gear ratioed really low because they have smaller engines and those things don't get much better than eight or nine miles to the gallon. Anyway, so another Vegas, another Vegas. There's a local one from Bakersfield to Buena Park, from Bakersfield to Stockton, another Buena Park, Bakersfield to Simi Valley. So really the, the bigger market, the market you have in LA is either Bakersfield spreading around the Southern California market, or if you do get something from the LA market, it's going to Vegas. And as you can see, you know, it's, it's relatively cheap. Um, you know, me personally, I wouldn't drive to Bakersfield to take a load to Simi Valley. Simi Valley's, you know, 15 minutes from my home. Um, but I wouldn't for 250 bucks go to Bakersfield and come back to Simi Valley. Even in a pickup truck, I wouldn't do it. Anyway. Let's show Dallas. Again, no market. Dallas is kind of a big metroplex. If we open that up to 200 miles, you know, again, those same ones we saw from the Houston area are the only ones in the area. 
It's a misconception, guys, if you think that just because Amazon has a big presence that you're going to have a big box truck market. That's a very big misconception. So what Amazon does is they establish their own routes with those vans. Now, the vans are independent contractors. They, they, they partner with them and lease the vans to them. And then you, as the business owner, hire your own personnel and you take care of meeting the schedule. Basically, it's Amazon's way of shedding the liability of having that many employees. So when they, when they take work away from you, they're not stuck with the unemployment issues you are. If someone has an accident on the highway, they're not stuck with the liability you are. If a driver, you know, twists his ankle, falls and, and you know, hits his head on the ground, they don't have a workman's comp claim, you do. Amazon is shedding their liability by putting that in your hands. The other thing Amazon does is they pay people like 20 bucks an hour to come by their fulfillment centers and take packages in their personal vehicles to go deliver to areas. And so when you're delivering with box trucks, what you're doing is you're taking loads from fulfillment centers to postal service offices and the postal service then does what, what Amazon calls the last mile. As Amazon's network grows, they will eventually set up a fulfillment center that can handle that directly and they won't need your box truck anymore. And so just understand, just because Amazon's in your area doesn't mean they need a box truck. Don't go make that big purchase thinking that, you know, there's, there's an abundance of work. You need to research a little bit. And that's why I'm saying if you guys, if you guys share these videos with others, It'll let them learn and understand, um, you know, that $20,000 truck they're going to purchase may not have any work. And then the $20,000 a year they're going to have to spend on insurance, maybe for nothing. Anyway, so those are some of the markets that you would think would have a need for box trucks, right? I mean, Philadelphia is a large city. Phoenix is a large city. Los Angeles, it does have work. It's not great. Um, Dallas is a large metroplex. I mean, it, it, by metroplex, I mean it's, it's two large cities that are surrounded by, you know, several suburb um, cities. Personally, I like Dallas for hauling freight. There's a lot of freight that moves there for semi-trucks. It's a little on the cheap side. But if you ever take a load to Dallas, you can always find a load within hours leaving there. <clears throat> but they don't need box trucks. Houston, Houston's always been cheap on freight. But it's a larger city. It has several um, Amazon facilities, and you would think they would have box truck need, right? But instead, they handle it in house, and so that's that's the 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 key. That's the that's the idea, right? Anyway, so I'm going to kind of show how the process works. Um, I'm going to have to obviously remove it from box truck. So like in my case, here at the top, you know, you kind of know what you're looking for. So I typically did the one way, I'm sorry, yeah, the one ways, your round trips tend to pay less per mile. And I think they do that to you because nine times out of 10, your round trip is going to be you're bringing back an empty and they try to squeeze you for that. Um, plus most of your round trips are power only and Amazon definitely squeezes you on on the power only stuff they they kind of view it like you're only providing the tractor so we're not going to pay you as much and so i'm gonna um i'm gonna set this up like like if it was me trying to book this load um so you can choose your destination which reduces you know your your odds but i'm just going to demonstrate how it works so let's just say I was trying to come home uh, from Philadelphia to Los Angeles. Um, my equipment would be a 53 foot trailer and then um, trailer status would be trailer required because I have my own. There's no need to set the payout amounts or the per mile, but as you can see, there's, there's already zero matches. And so if I was trying to get home, then what I would do is say, well, 
let's look at anywhere and see if I can find a load going halfway home um, or somewhere near, whether it's Phoenix, Northern California, Vegas, Reno, something that gets me close to, to the West Coast, right? And so then you, you see there's 34 matches, you know, now you have to kind of pick between these. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick Florida, even though I'm not going to do the load. Um, you click book, and then by confirming this, it will then drop it into your dispatch screen. Your dispatch screen, you will then need to assign a driver. Now, in theory, I could do this um, and still cancel it. I kind of don't like doing that because it, it ruffles feathers over there. It, it, it starts to affect. But all you would do is click on this. Your next screen would come up. And then there would be a drop-down menu for you to assign a driver. Um, basically, you, you build drivers in your profile. You click on that driver, and then that driver's application will alert him that, they, that the driver has uh, a load. Once the driver's ready to start, he just clicks on the application that he's starting the load, and it gives him turn-by-turn -turn, uh, GPS coordinates, and he goes. And so... Let's just say that I um, I was in Phoenix and I don't see the load I want. So what you do is you come to post a truck, which is up here at the top on the right hand side. You click on that and you know now you from the drop down menu kind of pick what it is what it is you have available so if I say one way you know where am I starting Phoenix destination you know I want to go to Los Angeles availability you got to kind of put here you know when you're when you're available to start so let's just say we were going to do it today and then You put your availability end date. Let's just say I want to be there by Monday. So anytime between today and Monday, if a load would come up, they would assign it to me. Now you do need to be careful when you do something like this because the application won't alert you as if I assigned you a load um, as a dispatcher. You'll get an email that you've been assigned a load and you have two hours to accept it or your um, your score gets impacted, okay? And so then, now you select your equipment, you know, carrier owned is the type of trailer that I have, driver type would be solo, and then here you can kind of put, you know, what it is you wanna make. So you can put flat rate or per mile, so if I'm going to LA, I can say I want, you know, 850, right? And so at this point, if I submit it, if a load comes up and my truck is in this queue, as they call it, what will happen is this load will never hit the load board. It'll get directly assigned to me and I have two hours to turn it down. Um, really, there should be no reason for me to turn it down, right? Because they're the parameters that I set. It's what I want. So there should be no reason for you to turn that down. It's a matter of you accept it and you go do the load. Um, there are several people that I know of. This is how they work. So they're not up all night trying to chase the load board. Um, they simply put a post a truck and, you know, they set their... They set their email to, to alert them on the phone. So if it goes off during the night, you know, they know what they got. And so this is how you post a truck. It is an effective way to, to get work. Um, I've used it. Instead of trying to stay up all night and, and see if something pops up, you can use the, the book a load. Uh, the, I'm sorry, post a truck. Um, it is a handy way to do it. You can, in some cases, get a little bit better rate. Um, I'm not really sure why, but if loads are posting at, let's just say, 
a dollar eighty a mile and you post that you want 225 sometimes they'll just give it to you and I think that's probably based on your score if you have a decent score um, and you see that that loads are being posted at a certain rate and you post your truck a little bit higher I think in some cases Amazon takes you up on it because they know if it goes on the load board people might play that game where they wait until right before it books and it books at a higher rate and I, I think their system kind of takes into account you're a good carrier with a good score and if they just give it to you they know the work will get done anyways that's kind of how the the booking process works guys um it's it's very simple it's not complicated um amazon does have uh a conference call they do once a week they used to do them on tuesdays i'm seeing on on some of the the groups people are saying they're on thursdays now you know i've not tried to log in 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 about a year so i i couldn't tell you if, if that's true or not but they do have um seminars they they invite you by email when you first get your your approval by them and all you basically do is log in you don't have to say anything you could just listen because enough people will ask questions how do you do this how do you do the other and they kind of go over it honestly I, I think they should you know switch that over to like a zoom meeting where you can you know see kind of like what I'm doing on a board what things are and what they do anyways I'm gonna wrap that up guys um, I do got some some personal stuff to do today I'm gonna run around with the family and take care of some errands um, but I should tomorrow night get back on the load board and uh, go through some markets comment down below what markets you're interested in and um, I'll see what I can get out for you guys thanks for your patience um, you know <laughs> I've gotten a lot of remarks where you been what's happening is everything okay everything's good I'm just catching up with family time is all thanks for all the love and respect guys I do appreciate it